Now, I've been hearing all over the internet how hard it is to use the Wi-Fi apps with these cameras and phones to transfer images over. It's actually really easy, uh, and I'm gonna show you how simple it is here at this park today. Hey, it's Mitch with Englewood Camera, and I remember just a couple years ago when we would have killed for the cameras that we have today that can transfer images straight from the camera right to our phone so we can share them on whatever social media we want. And I don't think anybody does it enough because I think a lot of people are scared of that functionality because sometimes there's like one or two steps to do it. But outside in a park like this, it's actually really easy. So I want to show you how easy that can actually be. Okay, so we're here at the park. I'm going to take a picture of Hayden and I'm going to take that photo and I'm going to put it on my cell phone and then I'm going to upload it to Instagram to show what a great time we're having. Okay, Hayden, are you ready to have a great time? Perfect. Hold that pose. There we go. We have the photo. I'm now going to send this image, which was literally like two button presses on the camera. And now I'm going to open the app on my phone and they will automatically connect. I'm not touching anything. They're connecting. This is real time. We're not going to cut any of this. I've not pressed anything else. I'm letting this thing load. It's already loading. About halfway done. Now it has that image copied onto my phone. It went straight to my gallery in iOS, and I can throw that straight to Instagram and show what a great time we're having. But this camera and this phone have already been connected to each other, so that's why it's so quick and easy to do. The setup process to initially pair them is like two more steps. So I'll show you how to do that, and then it'll be just as quick as this every time you do it when you're out at a park or a national park or wherever. Okay, so let's say that this camera and this phone have never been set up together before. Uh, we also have a Canon here to show you how to set those up too. Now with both of these brands, Canon and Sony, their setup process is very similar across most of their current cameras. So whether you have an A9 or a 6400 or a USRP or an M50, should be about the same. So I'm gonna show you how to do it here with the Sony first. Now on a Sony to set it up, there is a way to do it in the actual menu, but we all know that the Sony menu is kind of deep and confusing and weird. Um, but there's an easier way that I know of that I'll show you how to do. So what we'll do is go into the playback menu and we're gonna find an image that we like. Literally just look at that image and we're gonna hit the FN button, which is a multi-function button. And it also has the ability to, when you're in playback, give you a shortcut on how to send that particular image that you're looking at right to your cell phone. Now when you press that button, it shows a little arrow going to a cell phone on the back of the camera, and it gives you three different options. The first one is this image. The next one is all with this date, meaning you'll send every single photo you took on that same date, or multiple images, and that allows you to go through individual ones and put a check mark on them and send those over in a batch to your phone so you don't have to do it one by one by one by one. So right now I just want this image. So I'm going to select that and now the camera is in a Wi-Fi standby mode and I don't have to press anything else on the camera for the rest of this process. What I'm gonna do now is open the Imaging Edge app from Sony in my phone and it brings up this menu and one of the options in that menu is scan QR code of the camera. Now luckily the camera has displayed a QR code for me to scan. So I'm going to hit that button and it brings up this display. I hold it up to the QR code and I hit join when it prompts me with the message asking if I would like to join. Now I don't have to do anything else. The camera and the phone are connecting to each other and it will send that image to my phone and I can share it. And now they will remember each other every time I do that because they have met. Now, when you do this, you cannot send raw files over to your phone. You can only send JPEG files. You can send a full JPEG file, but not a raw file. For that, you would need some sort of SD card reader for your phone. But this is still cool when you just wanna throw something on Instagram. So now let's talk about how to do it on a Canon. And with the Canon, there's actually a couple extra features that they offer that are actually better than the Sony. Uh, and I think they're pretty cool. So let's show you how to do that. Okay, so now we're going to do the Canon initial setup, and Canon actually has a pretty straightforward guide built into their app that makes it really easy to connect to your camera. So even without me, I'm sure you'd fare fine. And luckily that camera has a actual functioning touch screen on their menu, and that makes it even easier. So what I'm going to do first, unlike the Sony, we're going to enter the app on the phone before we do anything with the camera. So we'll download the Canon app specifically for this and it brings up Easy Connection Guide, which is fantastic. 
And here we can type in what type of camera we have. So we're going to connect to a EOS RP. That's the camera we have in our case. I will say OK and it says, is this your camera? Can an EOS RP? I will say, yes, it is. And now to select the method to connecting to the camera, I want to choose Wi-Fi. So we are going to select Wi-Fi. Now it says to turn on the camera and press the menu button. So we're going to press the menu button. It brings up the menu and now it tells me to move to the wrench submenu. So I have done that. And it says select wireless communication settings from the tab of the icon shown below. There it is. So we have wireless communication settings right here and it wants me to select that, so I will. Next, select Wi-Fi settings. So I will select Wi-Fi settings and it's uh, next, I guess, is the next thing. So enable Wi-Fi, it says. It is already enabled on this camera, so that is fine. It says, if the camera displays a nickname registration screen, make the necessary settings according to what is displayed on the camera screen. It's pretty straightforward. It explains everything for you. Uh, press menu and return the wireless communications menu. Okay, I will. And then I will hit next. Now it says to select Wi-Fi function. Keep in mind that this whole setup process is only done once. I know we're going through a number of pages. There's a lot of button presses going on. But once this is all set up, we don't have to do this ever again. Uh, now that I have selected Wi-Fi function, I'm going to hit next. And it says OK. I'm going to register a nickname. The OSRP is the default nickname. I'm going to say OK. Uh, I'm going to hit OK again. And now it brings up this option, which is to select a phone. So I'm selecting a phone. Next, it says register a device for connection on. And I'm going to do that. OK. Hit next again. Smartphones, Wi-Fi settings, so I'm gonna hit iOS. Now I need to go back to the actual settings in the phone and find the Wi-Fi settings on my actual phone. And then the Canon should show up while it is searching. Okay, I did have a little bit of a hiccup with the Canon. Now, this is my first time actually connecting to this because I figured it'd be pretty easy. It is, it just does not tell you that this QR code is going to show up when you get to this part in the easy setup guide. All you gotta do is hit okay and it goes past that. Um, and now we can go into our Wi-Fi settings and this should be searching for a camera. Uh, on here, the SSID is EOS RP346 Canon OA. There it is, pop right up. And then I can enter the password. Join. There we are. I am now connected to my phone. Now it says confirm the name of the smartphone to connect. Connection established. We have connected. So it didn't like fail or anything in between there. Now the Canon can do a couple extra little tricks that the Sony can't do. It gives you the option right here on the app to do an auto transfer, meaning once you take the photo, it automatically goes to your phone without ever having to press anything. It's kind of like wireless tethering. Uh, or you can reduce image sizes to make those smaller. The Sony can actually do that. Um, or you can just have it connected via Bluetooth, which allows you to just set the one that you just took on the back of the screen. So you're like, oh, I like that picture. So you select it. And you don't even need to connect anything on your phone. You can, it can just be in your pocket and it can be asleep and it will automatically move it over. It does chew up a little bit of your battery life but it's kind of cool nonetheless. And I didn't know it was that easy to do with the Canons until I just tried it. And I actually like that feature a lot. Uh, you might like it too. So I hope this helps. I hope this makes it not seem so difficult with these cameras, because they're really not that hard. Now I did try with Nikon and I did try with Fuji. I don't want to sit here and say that they're all easy to use. If I was trying to connect to the Fuji, that one would kind of <sighs> And uh, the Nikon one, I've never gotten to work. So. At least with Canon and Sony, they work very, very well. Hey, thanks for letting me walk you through all this Wi-Fi stuff. I hope this helped you out. Now, with Sony and Canon, these two brands are the ones I've had the best luck with on their Wi-Fi features. So if you're considering a camera with good Wi-Fi functionality, definitely look into these two. Now, look, we really appreciate you guys watching these videos and commenting and liking them. So thanks again for watching. We have a great time making these videos and we can't wait to make the next one. So we'll see you guys later.